Water is the most critical issue that this county faces. And right up there, number one with water, is problems and issues relating to our youth. Those are the two things that I'm really concerned about. In reference to water, every water system in this county is under stress. Uh, City of Santa Cruz, Soquel Creek, uh, uh, Power Valley Water Management Agency. Now, one of those questions that I pose to uh, Supervisor Simon relates to water. And I please, uh, anybody out there listening, please read the question. What is the real cause of our water problem, and what does the present supervisor you know, think about does that? Does that answer your question, caller? How can a supervisor, in view, having an overview of this gigantic problem, impact, say, economic development in the county? What we have to be concerned about here, and everywhere people have to be concerned about this, or the leaders have to be concerned about it, is the concept of self-sustainability. What we have to do here is to have uh, environmentally sensitive, socially responsible, self-sustaining economic development and utilization of our human, fiscal, and natural resources. Our activities here have to be uh, 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 targeted, economic development activities, on a basis where we're going to be able to sustain them. Now, for, as an example of this, and this might sound kind of radical, but the Measure J and, and the, the common in terms of agriculture, what we want to do here is preserve our agricultural land. However, I submit that, that agriculture has changed here qualitatively from when that mandate was first established. And you know, when we were talking about saving our agricultural land, we were thinking in terms of uh, uh, orchard land. Thousands of acres of orchard land has been transformed into, uh, converted into berry production. Now the water requirements of berry productions are around four times the amount of what orchard land is. And as I mentioned, I feel one of the most critical issues that we have to face here is water. Uh, so to the extent that our agricultural production cannot be self-sustaining, given this new definition of agriculture, uh, in the way, possibly in how it's been redefined to now require water-intensive uh, uh, berry production as opposed to orchard use, maybe we have to re-examine this. So okay, self-sustainability, well, I believe, is, is uh, the objective. I think it's going to be interesting to see uh, how your campaign takes off, especially with the people who you want to be involved not contributing money. And I want to give you the opportunity to just give the phone number out one more time for people who do want to get involved with your campaign. My name is Doug Deach. My phone number is 476-7662. I want to be your instrumentality. I want to serve this community. But in order to do that, I don't need your money, but what I need is your help. And, uh, and not only do I need your help, but that's the only basis that I'll do this. If there are not people out there who want to get behind me, and uh, participate in this community and uh, try to make it a better place through me and helping me, then uh, I'm well, not going to do the job and I won't be able to. Thank you. Hi, my name is Zach Friend and I'm running for the second district county supervisor position. I just wanted to take a second to thank you for taking some time out to listen to my thoughts on the issues. The second district encompasses portions of the city of Capitola, the city of Watsonville, all of Aptos, Rio Del Mar, Seacliff, Seascape, uh, La Selva Beach, Coralitos, and Summer Freedom. You know, local elections really do matter, as we've seen at the state and national level, with all the infighting and sort of the political bickering back and forth, the place that we can make a real difference is at the local level. And this is one of the reasons why I think uh, that it's important that we elect local leaders that really do, do care about our community. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I, I grew up in San Diego, and I was fortunate to come here to Santa Cruz to school. I went to Cabrillo and I went to UC Santa Cruz studying American history. I got a job in local government and in fact I've worked in public service my entire adult life. I went to Georgetown for my master's in public policy and met my wife there. I got to work for Congressman Sam Farr in Congress as well as Senator Tom Daschle in the White House Council of Economic Advisors. But anybody who's grown up near the coast knows that at some point you got to come back to the coast and the opportunity for me ended up with the Santa Cruz Police Department where I've been there for the last, basically the last decade. In my role there, I, I work as a crime analyst for the agency. I manage a $23 million budget. I also serve as a press information officer for the agency. I, I've really worked there to try and bring transparency and accountability to uh, the agency and to the local community. I've, I've worked to develop the iPhone app and brought the predictive policing program. But mainly what I've tried to do is make sure that, the lo that our local police department was available and accessible uh, for all of you within the community. The question comes up, why would someone want to run for local office? Well, I mean, it's a valid question, especially with all the challenges we face, especially with the realignment from the, count, from the state down to the county and the federal government down to local governments. But I see all of those challenges as opportunities. In fact, as I've been out meeting with voters over the last six months, 
I've learned about some of the issues that they have. For example, I met a single mom that lives uh, in the South County that told me about some of her transportation issues. It's very hard for her with the extra hour that she spends in traffic to be able to afford daycare. I think that we can do better than that for her. I think that what we can do is change the political debate so it's more focused on policy and we're not focused on trying to score cheap political points and instead we're really focusing on how can we make people's lives better. How do we do that? We improve infrastructure like the local roads. We improve public safety by having more sheriff's deputies on the street and we ensure that we preserve the open spaces and prime ag land within our community. That's why I've been endorsed by the current and retiring Supervisor Ellen Peary, the Sheriff, uh, Phil Wowak, as well as Congressman Sam Farr and a number of others. I ask you to join with me uh, in this endeavor. I think that together we can completely do this. I think that as long as we uh, agree to tackle big problems and, and ignore political issues, we can do this. Thank you. I'd be honored to have your vote. Hello, I'm Daniel Beckett and I'm running for Supervisor, 2nd District. I'm a lifetime local resident, uh, 48 years in Coralitos. I've had family in the area since the 1920s, attended local public schools, went to Cabrillo College. I've been self-employed as a uh, general building contractor for 17 years, specializing in small remodels and repairs. I've been uh, involved with the community for many years. I volunteered for many efforts. I worked with the community in Watsonville to prevent their water supply from being fluoridated. I also worked with people to prevent the adoption of the Coralitos Plan in Coralitos, which would have changed the rural character of Coralitos forever. I also attended many of the meetings in regards to the Aptos Village Plan, and unfortunately that plan is going to move forward, and I think people will be very unhappy with how that turns out. Uh, my main platform position is I want to represent the people in the 2nd District, I fear that there's uh, not a lot of representation going on in the county, and I want to represent people. They pay my salary, I want to represent them. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is that when I, uh, when I went down to file my paperwork, myself and every other candidate was what had to take an oath to the U.S. Constitution to protect it and defend it, and I take my oath very seriously. I think that's important for people to know. Um, I, would join, I will join with Supervisor Caput in taking a 25% salary reduction, and I want to see this money go toward the roads. A lot of politicians, I don't, I'm not a politician, but a lot of people talk about fixing the roads, and I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is and put my salary toward fixing the roads. I will not tolerate any nepotism or political cronyism in office. This has been a problem over the years at county government. And uh, when I'm elected, I will, I will take a common sense approach to county government. And I will be a full-time representative, and I have no intentions of seeking higher office or using my position as a stepping stone to achieve higher office. Uh, please visit my campaign website, www.beckettforsupervisor.com, or you can call me directly, 722-9403, because I know people will have questions. So uh, please, uh, I would ask for your vote on June the 5th, and uh, thank you for watching. Communities of Aptos, La Selva Beach, Corralitos, Capitola, and the city of Watsonville, my name is Antonio Rivas, and I'm running for county supervisor. My qualifications to be your representative, I am a two-year uh, term mayor and vice mayor for the city of Watsonville, and eight years with the city council. Also, as an elected official, I've been involved with the transportation, the Santa Cruz County Transportation Commission, uh, the uh, uh, Santa Cruz uh, County Arts Council, also be part of the Pajaro Valley Unified School District Bank Committee, and part of the Metro Board, and many others. I had 35 years in the public education as a high school and middle school counselor, resource teacher, and coordinator of different educational programs. At the same time, be a coach with the girls softball team and the Little League baseball team. My wife, Marisa, a registered nurse, married for 42 wonderful years and raised three wonderful uh, caring children. As your county supervisor, I will bring new ideas and vision in order to bring better paying jobs to our county. I will advocate to provide tax incentives for our local businesses and our ag industry. I will continue to ensure the services for our seniors and our youth who are our future. I will work in the county general plan 
to have a balanced economic development plan in order that we continue to allocate the resources for, needed for public safety, community services, parks and recreation programs, and others. I will coordinate with our educational institutions in order to improve the education opportunities for our students. I will make changes on the, on the county infrastructure, uh, infrastructure plan to fix our streets, our sidewalks, have more bike lanes, fix our roads, bridges that we have done in our city of Watsonville. I will make sure to listen and meet you, the taxpayers, so I can continue to be careful with, with your money and at the same time be transparent on how we allocate your money. If, if you elect me, I will cut 20% of my county supervisor salary in order to support our county services. I'm a person with experience, government and education that will make our county to go forward. So I ask on June 5th, you carry and vote for Antonio Rivas. Por favor, voten el 5 de junio por Antonio Rivas. Gracias, thank you. Hello, I am Rich McKinnis, but some of you might know me better as the beer tender from the Seabreeze Tavern. I am running for the county supervisor in the second district because I know I can fix our county government based on my own personal experience with it. I have owned and operated the Seabreeze Tavern since 2005 and through the course of buying, restoring and running my small business, I've been caught in several of the county's revenue traps that I believe are counterproductive and go against our residents' wishes. Those wishes are that our small businesses are the backbone of our community because we eat, drink, shop, and socialize at these small businesses run by our friends and neighbors. And because of these extra fees imposed by our county, our small businesses have to charge higher prices to survive, and this drives them out of business as their customers go to national chains with lower prices. You can see the proof all around our county with all the empty storefronts that used to house small businesses, and this also deprives our local residents of much needed jobs as well. When elected, I will work hard to eliminate these revenue traps for our small businesses and help them to thrive instead of choking them with our county's red tape. I will also work hard to help our struggling homeowners dealing with our county's expensive permit process and red tags, as well as the illegal foreclosure tactics by the same banks we bailed out in 2008. Feel free to drop by the Seabreeze Tavern and speak with me in person any Friday, Saturday, or Sunday after 6 p.m. Thank you for your vote.